Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, July 2nd, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We have been reading the account of Samson, and when you think of Samson, the other person that you probably think of soon after that is a woman named Delilah. Today, we're going to conclude the account of Samson by looking at his uh, disastrous relationship with Delilah and his very tragic death. Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute and went to bed with her. When the Gazites heard that Samson was there, they surrounded the place and waited in ambush for him all that night at the city gate. They kept quiet all night, saying, let's wait until dawn, then we'll kill him. But Samson stayed in bed only until midnight. Then he got up, took hold of the doors of the city gate along with the two gate posts, and pulled them out, bar and all. He put them on his shoulders and took them to the top of the mountain overlooking Hebron. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the Sorek Valley. The Philistine leaders went to her and said, persuade him to tell you where his great strength comes from, so we can overpower him, tie him up, and make him helpless. Each of us will then give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me, where does your great strength come from? How could someone tie you up and make you helpless? Samson told her, if they tie me up with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I will become weak and be like any other man. The Philistine leaders brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him up with them. While the men in ambush were waiting in her room, she called out to him, Samson, the Philistines are here. But he snapped the bowstrings as a strand of yarn snaps when it touches fire. The secret of his strength remained unknown. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have mocked me and told me lies. Won't you please tell me how you can be tied up? He told her, if they tie me up with new ropes that have never been used, I will become weak and be like any other man. Delilah took new ropes, tied him up with them and shouted, Samson, the Philistines are here. But while the man in ambush were waiting in her room, he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have mocked me all along and told me lies. Tell me how you can be tied up. He told her, if you weave the seven braids of my head in, into the fabric on a loom. She fastened the braids with a pin and called to him, Samson, the Philistines are here. He awoke from his sleep and pulled out the pin with the loom and the web. How can you say I love you, she told him, when your heart is not with me? This is the third time you have mocked me and not told me what makes your strength so great. Because she nagged him day after day and pleaded with him until she wore him out, he told her the whole truth and said to her, my hair has never been cut because I am a Nazarite to God from birth. If I am shaved, my strength will leave me and I will become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah realized that he had told her the whole truth, she sent this message to the Philistine leaders. Come one more time, for he has told me the whole truth. The Philistine leaders came to her and brought the silver with them. Then she let him fall asleep on her lap and called a man to shave off the seven braids on his head. In this way, she made him helpless and his strength left him. Then she cried, Samson, the Philistines are here. When he awoke from his sleep, he said, I will escape as I did before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. The Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes. They brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles, and he was forced to grind grain in the prison. But his hair began to grow back after it had been shaved. Now the Philistine leaders gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to their god, Dagon. 
They rejoiced and said, our God has handed over our enemy Samson to us. When the people saw him, they praised their God and said, our God has handed us handed over to us our enemy who destroyed our land and who multiplied our dead. When they were in good spirits, they said, bring Samson here to entertain us. So they brought Samson from prison and he entertained them. They had him stand between the pillars. Samson said to the young man who was leading him by the hand, lead me where I can feel the pillars supporting the temple so I can lean against them. The temple was full of men and women. All the leaders of the Philistines were there and about 3000 men and women were watching on the roof, were on the roof watching Samson entertain them. He called out to the Lord, Lord God, please remember me. Strengthen me, God, just once more. With one act of vengeance, let me pay back the Philistines for my two eyes. Samson took hold of the two middle pillars supporting the temple and leaned against them, one on his right and the other on his left. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. He pushed with all his might, and the temple fell on the leaders and all the people in it. And those he killed at his death were more than those he had killed in his life. Then his brothers and his father's whole family came down, carried him back, and buried him between Zorah and Eshtol in the tomb of his father Manoah. So he judged Israel 20 years. As we continue reading in the book of Acts, we continue following Paul on the uh, second part of his uh, third missionary journey and uh, accompany him as he begins to make his way back to Jerusalem. After the uproar was over, Paul sent for the disciples, encouraged them, and after saying farewell, departed to go to Macedonia. And when he had passed through those areas and offered them many words of encouragement, he came to Greece and stayed three months. The Jews plotted against him when he was about to set sail for Syria. And so he decided to go back through Macedonia. He was accompanied by Sopater, son of Pyrrhus from Berea, Aristarchus and Secundus from Thessalonica, Gaius from Derby, Timothy, Tychicus, and Trophimus from the province of Asia. These men went on ahead and waited for us in Troas, but we sailed from Philippi after the festival of unleavened bread. In five days, we reached them at Troas, where we spent seven days. On the first day of the week, we assembled to take bread. Paul spoke to them, and since he was about to depart the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the room upstairs where we were assembled, and a young man named Eutychus was sitting on a windowsill and sank into a deep sleep as Paul kept on talking. When he was overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was picked up dead. But Paul went down, bent over him, embraced him, and said, don't be alarmed, because he's alive. After going upstairs, breaking the bread and eating, Paul talked a long time until dawn. Then he left. They brought the boy home alive and were greatly comforted. We went on ahead to the ship and sailed for Assus, where we were going to take Paul on board, because they, these were his instructions, since he himself was going by land. When he met us at Assos, we took him on board and went on to Mytilene. Sailing from there, the next day we arrived off Chios. The following day we, arrived, we crossed over to Samos, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus to avoid spending time in the province of Asia, because he was hurrying to be in Jerusalem, if possible, for the day of Pentecost. Now from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and summoned the elders of the church. When they came to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day I set foot in Asia, how I was with you the whole time, serving the Lord with all humility, humility with tears, and during the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. You know that I did not hesitate to proclaim anything to you that was, was profitable and to teach you publicly from house to house. I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus. And now I am on my way to Jerusalem, 
compelled by the Spirit, not knowing what I will encounter there, except that in every town the Holy Spirit warns me that chains and afflictions are waiting for me. But I consider my life of no value to myself. My purpose is to finish my course and the ministry I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the grace of God's, the gospel of God's grace. And now I know that none of you, among whom I went about preaching the kingdom, will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, because I did not avoid declaring to you the whole plan of God. Be on your guard for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit appointed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Men will rise up even from your own number and distort the truth to lure the disciples into following them. Therefore, be on alert, remembering that night and day for three years, I never stopped warning each one of you with tears. And now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that I worked with my own hands to support myself and those who are with me. In every way, I've shown, that, shown you that it is necessary to help the weak by laboring like this and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, because he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. After he said this, he knelt down and prayed with all of them. There were many tears shed by everyone. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving most of all over his statement that they would never see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.